You're going to roll in? Nostalgia Pals, where I don't think I explained it the last time I did the video, mm -hmm. but what this is, <laughs> is that I read a book from my best friend's childhood, and I sit down and talk about it with them. Yay! So this time it's Andrea. We read, what did we read? Dealing with Dragons, Enchanted Forest Chronicles number one. Oh my god. There's four. <laughs> 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 we didn't bring the books. That's I was fine. yeah, I was gonna bring my boxed collection, but I forgot. It's okay. And also, it probably would have been a bad idea because I'd have just weighed down my suitcase, and I need to bring stuff back with me. So, I mean, could have just brought one. No, <laughs> one. You have to bring all four. So we read Dealing with Dragons. Where did you discover this book? So when I was little, um, I used to spend the summers with my grandma and grandpa. And I, they lived like two or three blocks from the only library <laughs> like in our area. Um, and so they would take me there a lot. And they wouldn't, I was only allowed to take out five books at a time. But I thought this was very unfair because I would read them in like a day or two. And then they would just have to take me again. So it didn't make any sense to me. This was during the period of my life where I just went through like all sorts of series like babysitters club and like nancy drew sweet valley and, high no i was too little sweet um, valley twins sweet valley twins it was like the pg version yeah. and um the saddle club i was really obsessed with the saddle club um but at one point i discovered dealing with dragons and i don't know it seemed very mature to me compared to everything else i was reading like it felt very much like like a big kid book um Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> and I just really liked it. I really identified with the main character. Um, I like breezed through all four books. Is it because you looked like her? No. I didn't even know I looked like her until you showed me that picture. I really didn't. So. Okay, so what happens in the books? Or in the first book, at least. Yeah, in the first book. Um, so basically, it's about this princess. This book, by the way, was written in 1990. So um, it's very much like a classic fairy tale-ish idea of what princesses are. I think like it's, it's feminist like, as fuck though. Yeah. No, I, I enjoyed it. So it's basically this princess and she likes to fence and she likes to cook and she likes to do all these things that princesses aren't allowed to do. Um, and her parents are constantly telling her not to do them. Um, and they just kind of exist in this like uneasy, like, you know, peace-ish sort of thing until they're like, okay, time for you to marry a prince. And she's like, oh, hell no. <laughs> Um, so she doesn't know what to do, she doesn't want to marry the prince, she doesn't want to be a princess, and then she meets this, like, random frog that tells her about, um, the dragon's cave and where they're at. I have a question. I didn't read the rest of the books in the series, but does the frog come out again? No. It just seemed like such a... <laughs> but there's lots of... The, the frog doesn't come out again, but, like, animals talk, like, in the books, and, like, in the actual enchanted forest, there's tons of animals that talk and just live there, and they're, like, normal citizens, so there's other books that take place more in the enchanted forest, and so you get a lot of that, um, but the first book is more kind of set, um, in the caves where the dragons live, so, like, in this, like, world building thing, like, each set of creatures has their own area, so, like, the wizards tend to live in this area, and the dragons over here and the giants are over here. Anyway, so she decides to go find the dragons and, you know, dragons were notorious for kidnapping princesses and then they had to be rescued by princes and knights. Um, and she was the first ever to, like, request to be a princess, so all the dragons were, like, really confused and they were, like, waiting for the catch. <laughs> They're like, what? We should just eat you. We don't trust you. What do this you? is weird. <laughs> um, or but maybe they were just, like, she had, like, okay, you don't, you don't want to give her thrones. This would have no, been, like, an excellent moment to, like, Dracarys. Yeah, I don't know who that is. I'm sorry. Okay. Are you gonna put like a little thing saying I suck? No, I would never. <laughs> but she becomes a princess of um, this dragon named Kazul, and um, she just kind of starts learning like dragony things. So she's really smart. So she reads a lot of books and she cooks and she kind of starts becoming friends with her dragon. And so her dragon starts like 
teaching her things that princesses don't normally know so she starts learning about how to make spells and like how everything works um, and she meets other princesses who are like really pissed off to be there and the magic in this book is like it's very like sciencey so it's about like mm. finding the right spell that uses the right proportions of things and just like getting it right mm -hmm. as opposed to just like there are rules it's not completely like crazy and aside from like talking frogs yeah <laughs> random talking frogs like oh what is this it's one of those books that you don't have to have any like background knowledge for like you could know nothing about dragons and nothing about wizards and just it's a kid's fantasy book basically the plot of the book is like the wizard to try to take down the dragons and so um she and her friend kind of teaming up with the dragons and helping to uh defeat the wizard's plot the, the dragons that are already there do they kidnap do they kidnap princesses is that a thing that they do how did the other princess get there yeah i think they did and then Simmerine is the only one who volunteers. But I think I think it's like it's kind of hard to kidnap princesses, so I don't think it happens very often. So like having a princess was seen as like a badge of like like you were an extra cool dragon if mm -hmm. you had a princess. They all live together in like yeah. a nest. Yeah, it's like um they ha they live in this like collection of caves basically, and just imagine like a humongous like underground like cavern system and so each dragon has like their own living area and it's kind of a maze down there so like her dragon has a library and a kitchen and Simmerine that's the name of the princess she has her own bedroom and you know the dragon has the own bedroom and then they have like conference rooms right because um, there's like a, a council of dragons yeah yeah so her her dragon is like kind of important like he she's not like the king of the dragons but She's like, I don't know what she is. I feel like she's consultant on things. Like, yeah, she's a high rank. She's like a high ranking dragon. She's like a big deal, but yeah. not the biggest deal. Why is it that the wizards want to get rid of the dragons? Power. They're just they're men. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's true. It, it's just more like I said. Like each each um, creature like controls certain areas, so the wizards want access to like the dragon areas. So they figure, you know. Let, let's go after them so we can have access to these parts that we think have more magic that could be useful to us like the wizards basically want like total world domination they're they're not nice like in the entire four books like you don't meet a single nice, nice wizard. wizard like <laughs> they're all terrible <laughs> like the witches are nice the, you know but the wizards no nah. because they're boys how is the first book different from the other books is there like a difference no, it's basically just a continuation of the story, so all four books kind of follow um, the same characters, uh, different stuff going on. It always involves the wizards. Um, just starting but, shit. Yeah, it's just starting shit. What are the other books in the series? Do you know their names? Okay, it's Dealing with Dragons, Searching for Dragons, Calling on Dragons, and Talking to Dragons. And you've read all of them? I have all of them. Which one's your favorite? The first? Um, probably. Probably. Although I, I, I think I was most traumatized by, like, the last one. Why? I can't. That would be spoilers. But, I mean, describe your emotions. To why was it traumatizing? Because beating the wizards involved waiting, like, 20 years. For, like like before anything could be like there was basically I won't say what but like they needed something in order to defeat the wizards mm -hmm. and that something wouldn't happen for like 20 years so like they just had to wait, wait. and exist and then they like, kill and, all of the wizards. and it involved existing without their loved ones for so, 20 like, years I don't remember if it was 20 but it was it was definitely like more than a decade what it was if, long enough that I was just like what is happening? Like, this is awful! Whatever it takes to take down the patriarchy. Yeah. <laughs> By the fourth book, you're, like, really invested in the characters and stuff, so you're just like, what? what? Oh, I'm curious now. Oh, and there's a fire witch in that book, too, who's, like, learning to control her powers and doesn't really know. So, like, sometimes shit works and she, like, burns everyone, but <laughs> then sometimes it doesn't. So, like... As one does. Yeah. I liked it. It was a so, fast read. Yeah, it's very fast. Fast read, but the book has such a sense of humor. The book is really funny. And I liked how 
the dragons don't trust her and how Kazul doesn't trust her at first. And then and then they become best friends. And then they become best friends and I'm like, Ghouls, where's my dragon girlfriend? There's a lot of parts in the books where in the book, um, where people try to come rescue her, including her like ex fiance or whatever. Um, everyone's always trying to rescue her and she's like, Go away, I don't need to be rescued, bye and like nobody gets it. Um, so eventually she like starts diverting them to like other princesses who yeah. like, actually want to be rescued. She puts out a sign. That's how the kind of like the plot of the wizards start where she puts a sign, she goes yeah. down and she's like sit she's like, I have things to do and I can't like take time out of my day to like Yeah reroute all of these princes trying to come and rescue me so she puts a sign i also really like at one point she was like well if you want to fight because the whole thing is they have to fight the dragon to rescue her so at one point she was like well you gotta fight me before you can fight my dragon and the princess were like Ooh. ah we can't fight a princess we have to fight the dragon like, at one point she says she like sprained her ankle and she can't walk so she needs them to come back in like six months or whatever when her ankle is healed. She gives them like a bunch of excuses. Yeah, She's because like, they can't, they can't, they can't like bring a horse right up to the cave. I don't know, it was like really rocky or something. So like they had to walk the last portion and she was like, oh, I would love to be rescued by my ankle. <laughs> She's cool. She's. I like how the book is funny and it's like for strong girls, but it's not. I mean, it's okay if it were preachy, but it's not. It's just this is how she is, and this is how this is her worldview, and everyone else is just kind of ridiculous. Yeah. So it's the message is not like <clears throat> it's more like how about some feminism? <laughs> <laughs> want some of this? Do you want some of yeah. feminism? Under you? <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you want to say about the book? It's great, and everyone should read it. It was, good. It was a simple book. Yeah. It was very straightforward. It's like a perfect like beach read or if you just want to like chill and escape from like your horrible job stressors or like I don't know you're having relationship problems like just go read about this princess who doesn't need a prince and is cool with just her dragon. Yeah and it'll make you feel empowered but also it made me feel empowered but sad that I didn't have a dragon in my life. <laughs> How did reading this book change little Andrea? Like, how did it, reading it, did it have any kind of, like, effect with you? I don't, I don't know. I don't know that it, like, it was just so different from, like, everything else I had read before. Like, I think it was probably my first, like, foray into, like, fantasy-ish type mm -hmm. book. I don't know. I think it gave me a better idea of, like, the kinds of books, like, I wanted to read. Like, a lot of the books that I read, like, I would just plow through, like, a series that had, like, 200 books, and mm -hmm. they were all kind of similar or whatever, but I would just read them to read them because I read so many books that I just never had, like, enough books to read. And, and I thought, like, the series... It's not that it gets more mature as it goes along, because it doesn't, but, like, the characters get older, and, like, characters have kids and stuff, so I, I felt like I was reading through like a legit progression mm -hmm. I don't know I didn't feel like a kid's book is there any romance there is romance is it because you know how I feel about dragons is it between no damn <laughs> <laughs> no human dragon romance no, in this one but if it makes you feel better Kazul becomes the godmother of future children so she's involved so when you were little you didn't realize how feminist this book was no. I think when I was little, I really didn't realize anything because I also really liked Little Women when I was younger, and then I remember reading it as an adult, and I was like, this is terrible. <laughs> like, this is so Christian, and, like, the women aren't allowed to do anything. Why did I ever like this book? So I feel like I didn't pick up on a lot of things when I was little. So, okay, so how about now when you reread it for Nostalgia Pals? Did you pick up an on anything that maybe you hadn't noticed when you were younger? I mean, I guess I realized, like, oh, this is cool that she doesn't want to be, you know, who society wants her to be. Um, but for the most part, I think it was one of those one of those few books that I think, like, I read when I was little, and then I read again. I think the time that I read it at the same time as you, it was, like, the third time I read it, because I read it once, I think, in, like, my early 20s, mm -hmm. I read it again. And, like, all the times I've read it, I've enjoyed it just as much. Who knows, maybe Patricia will read, will watch this video. And Maybe. let's say she is and she makes it to this point. What do you want to say to her? Would you say anything to her about the book? And how That like... I love it. That I loved it then. I still love it now. <laughs> 
is great. Go read Dealing with Dragons. I guess if you don't like dragons, you shouldn't read this book. Who doesn't like yeah, dragons? I, just, I, I don't understand people like that. Thank you, Andrea, for talking to me about Dealing with Dragons. Thanks for having me. Of course. You know what we're going to do now? <laughs> Always. Oh, we're going to go to a sunflower field. And take pictures? Take glamour shots. I'm going to take the pictures. You're going to be doing the whole whatever you just did that I can't do. You can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> Channel your inner dragon. <laughs> <laughs> hey there. Thanks for watching Nostalgia Pals. Are you a fan of dealing with dragons? Did this video make you yearn for a dragon girlfriend? Leave a comment to let us know. If you enjoyed yourself, make sure to like this video, and for other bookish videos, subscribe to this channel. Turn on your alerts so you can get a notification whenever there's something you posted here. Peace out!